Uh, reading from the Gospel of Mark. This is Mark 5, 25 through 34 in the New American Standard Version. For those uh, following along at home. Sorry if I'm blacking out here. Yep, I'm blacking out. <laughs> and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Peter responded, you see people crowding against you, and yet you can ask who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from suffering. This is the word of the Lord. So it appears that my running theme is going to be the three H's, which is going to be head, heart, and hands. The head, we will go through this and understand it on an intellectual understanding. The heart, spiritual understanding, and the hands is how to put the teaching or teachings into practice. So we'll begin with the head. Here we see a woman suffering from a disorder, causing her to menstruate often. She suffered from this for over 12 years. She has spent literally all of her money on doctors and it's only gotten worse. It hasn't gotten better. She's ashamed. She is shamed by other people. She's slandered. She's an outcast among her own people. Jewish law was very harsh with regard to these conditions. It's called nida in Hebrew, N-I-D-D-A-H. It's a word that describes a woman who's experienced a uterine discharge of blood or a woman who has menstruated and not yet completed the associated requirement of immersion in mikvah, which is the ritual bath. Biblical regulations of Leviticus 15.19 specifies that a menstruating woman must separate from everyone for seven days. Any object she sits on, lies upon, or touches carries the tuma, which means uncleanliness. So you can only imagine what this poor woman has gone through all of these years. She can't be with anyone. She can't have a relationship with anyone. She can't do anything with anyone because she's considered to be unclean. And everything she has spent has done nothing. But she hears about Jesus. She was one of the many, the very, very far end of the crowd that heard him at the Sermon of the Mount. But there were too many people for her to get to him. But his teachings resonated in her so much that she had this faith. He fired up this faith in her. So sometime later, she sees Jesus on a narrow street, kind of like what you see here where I'm blanking out, <laughs> hold on, with a bunch of people and a bunch of people around Jesus. Jesus was on his way to Jairus' home with three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, to heal Jairus' 12-year-old daughter. Here's that 12 again, you know, 12 years of this woman suffering, 12 um, years old with the girl, 12 disciples. We'll get into that some other sermon. So the woman's like, so getting, becoming anxious. She's on the outskirts of this crowd, you know, we see. And do I go in? Do I not go in? As she's contemplating this, 
she starts bleeding. She knows that if she makes a move towards the crowd, everybody's going to know. And what's going to happen? She could possibly, by law, be stoned to death, be killed, be executed because she's unclean. But she has that faith, that burning faith inside her that she knows that if she can just get to Jesus and touch just even the hem of his tunic, she'll be cured. So here comes Jesus with the people around him, people pushing and shoving, and she makes her move. She gets just enough close to just barely touch the hem of his tunic. And instantly, she's cured, completely healed. But at the same time, Jesus stops in mid-stride. Feels like someone punched him in the stomach. He feels the healing power go through him. And I want to be specific about this because it's not that Jesus lost power. He's always connected with the divine, as we are always connected with the divine. So he didn't lose any power. The power just went through him. He felt that rush of power. And he also felt this woman's extreme faith. So, of course, the first thing Jesus does, he stops. He's like, what's happened? He's looking around. He's asking everybody, who touched me? Who touched me? And the brilliant Peter, <laughs> in all his wisdom, was like, you know, what do you mean? People are shoving up against you. Look at all these people. You know, look at all these people. How can you say, who touched me? Everybody's touching you. And Jesus, again, asked the question, who touched me? The woman, now healed, is literally just a heap on the ground, sobbing in tears. She's been healed completely, but here we go. You know, everybody's looking at her. Everybody stopped. Now all the attention's on her again. And she confesses to Jesus, I touched you. But see, that's the thing is, Jesus knew who touched him. He knew what was going to happen. He knew this woman was going to do what she did. What does he do? Jesus turns to her. He kneels down with tears in his own eyes and touches this woman and says, daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be freed from your suffering. So now we move to the heart. How often do we suffer in this way? Illnesses, that don't go away within a few days, considered a burden by most. So many turn away from you in these situations, especially if you are one who has a condition that has been and will be a condition for your entire life. Sadly, those people are looked down upon and ignored. I believe all of us have experienced this at one time or another. Sadly enough, some of us are experiencing this right now. And then the same goes on the flip side. How many people do we know who are suffering, who are unclean, or what society labels unclean? Homeless people, people with deformities, people with disabilities. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And how do so many of us look at them? Do we look at them with pity? Do we look at them with love? And that's exactly what Jesus did with this woman. And Jesus did with everyone. Does he look at them with love? Jesus didn't single this woman out to make a spectacle of her. He singled her out to show her faith. And to show everyone this woman's faith. And also to show that she was now clean. But again, so many of us in this, our culture are considered to be unclean. 
So what do we do? Be like Jesus. Show love to everyone. Please note how Jesus addressed the woman, called her daughter. She had not been called by that name for a very long time. Jesus not only healed and embraced her as a clean human, he embraced her as his own, his daughter. And he does the very same to us, to you, to me, to everyone. And that's the thing we have to keep in mind is everyone. We are all children of the divine, the creator, God, brothers and sisters of Jesus. All of us are. So we are to see everyone it's the same. To not do so, and I hate using this word, and I rarely do use it, but in this situation, to not do so is a sin. It goes contrary to everything Jesus taught us. So now we move to the hands. How do we put this in practice? We must not be ashamed of our illnesses, defects, differences, or who or what we are. Positive self-care and positive self-image are dire and cannot be stressed enough. And that goes for everyone, not just us. We must strengthen our faith. And I know this is very difficult, especially in today's day and age. Especially when we're suffering, it's hard. Thus the reason why it's so important to work on our faith when we are well, or even if we're feeling okay. We have to pray daily, deepen our communion with the divine, whatever you want to label that, which can't be labeled. Study scripture or books from your favorite teachers and contemplate what you study. It does you and anyone no good just to read. And when you do, do as I'm doing right now, apply those three H's. Head, hands, heart. Once you begin this, don't just keep it to yourself. Share it with as many people as you can, just as Jesus did. The next time you encounter someone who is ill, has a long-term or lifelong illness, deformity, handicap, someone who is different from you, love them as Jesus loved this woman. So many underestimate the healing of just a simple touch. Since COVID, so many have become phobic to even being closer than six feet with someone. We have to overcome this. There's so much healing in just a hug, hugging someone. Pump up your faith. Cast your fears aside. Be like Jesus. In fact, this is how we should be each and every moment of our lives. No matter what we're going through, be like Jesus. I know it's easier said than done. But what would life be like if we all tried? Everyone we come into contact with. Again, if we just tried to be like Jesus. What would the world look like? The world would be transformed into a heaven on earth. Bless you.